A federal jury has decided that the county of Los Angeles must pay Vanessa Bryant $16 million in emotional damages after first responders took, and shared, grisly photos of the 2020 helicopter crash that killed her husband, Kobe Bryant, and her 13-year-old daughter and seven others. After 11 days of painstaking back and forth between the defense and the persecution, the jury finally concluded in Bryant's favor. Here's everything that we know, starting off with some well-earned justice being served. Kobe Bryant, the former Lakers star, five-time NBA champion, and member of the Basketball Hall of Fame, was traveling with Gianna and seven others to a youth basketball game. When the helicopter they were aboard crashed into the hills in Calabasas, west of Los Angeles, on January 26, 2020, Kobe Bryant's widow, Vanessa, was awarded $16 million as a part of a $31 million jury verdict verdict Wednesday against Los Angeles County for deputies and firefighters sharing grisly photos of the NBA star, their 13-year-old daughter Gianna, and other victims killed in a 2020 helicopter crash. The jurors also awarded $15 million to plaintiff Chris Chester, who lost his wife Sarah and daughter Peyton in the wreck. The jury deliberated four and a half hours before reaching the verdict on Kobe Bryant Day, which is commemorated in Los Angeles on August 24 because it represents his jersey numbers, 8 and 24, and is the day after his birthday. Tuesday would have been Bryant's 44th birthday. After the verdict, Vanessa Bryant posted a photo on Instagram of herself with her husband and daughter. The caption read, All for you, I love you. Justice for Kobe and Gigi. So how did Vanessa Bryant react to the news when she heard it? On Friday, Bryant testified in court that she was blindsided, devastated, hurt, and betrayed upon learning from a February 2020 Los Angeles Times report that first responders had taken photos of Kobe and Gianna at the scene of the crash. The pictures were shared mostly among employees of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's and fire departments including by some who were playing video games and attending an awards banquet. During the trial, Bryant's attorney, Louise Lee, played juror security video of an off-duty sheriff's deputy drinking at a bar and showing the photos to the bartender, who shakes his head in dismay. The lawyer then showed an image of the men laughing together later. Lee described firefighters looking at the phone photos two weeks later at an awards banquet, and showed the jury an animated chart documenting their spread to nearly 30 people. An attorney for the county defended the taking of the photos as an essential tool for first responders seeking to share information when they thought they might still save lives at the chaotic, dangerous, and hard-to-reach crash scene. Bryant tearfully testified during the 11-day trial that news of the photos compounded her still raw grief a month after the deaths of her husband and daughter, and that she has panic attacks at the thought that the photos might still be out there. I live in fear every day of being on social media and these popping up, she testified. I live in fear of my daughters being on social media and in these popping up. We are grateful for a jury and judge who gave us a fair trial, Chester's lawyer Jerry Jackson said. Her attorneys didn't give jurors a dollar amount they thought their client deserved, but Chester's attorney gave them suggested guidelines that would have meant tens of millions for each plaintiff. Bryant was also joined by two other celebrity friends. Two other celebrity supporters, singer Sierra and Monica, joined Vanessa Bryant in Los Angeles federal court Monday as her trial over graphic photos of the helicopter crash that killed her NBA star husband and 13-year-old daughter stretched into its ninth day. The Grammy-winning artist sat behind Bryant 40 as she listened to testimony from Captain William Yeager, an internal affairs officer with the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department who was questioned about a probe tied to the photos. But how did the proceedings go? Vanessa Bryant and her attorney declined to comment outside court Wednesday. Her face was still streaked with tears as she walked past TV cameras and dozens of reporters and climbed into an SUV. Her lawyer Louise Lee told jurors that the close-up photos had no official or investigative purpose and were mere visual gossip shared out of a gruesome curiosity. County attorney Jay Mira Hashmal argued during the trial that the photos were a necessary tool 
responsible for assessing the situation. She acknowledged that they should have not been shared with everyone who saw them, but she emphasized that the photos had never appeared publicly and had never been seen by the plaintiffs. She said that meant that Sheriff Alex Villanueva and other officials had taken decisive and effective action when they ordered those who had the photos to delete them. However, the verdict came out in Bryant's favor. The nine jurors unanimously agreed with Vanessa Bryant and her attorneys that the photos invaded her privacy and caused emotional distress. She cried quietly as the verdict was read. In response to the photos being taken, California Governor Gavin Newsom signed an invasion of privacy bill in September 2020, called the Kobe Bryant Act, which makes it illegal for first responders to share photos of the deceased at a crime scene unless it's for official law enforcement purposes. Jurors unanimously found that the LA County Sheriff's Department violated the constitutional rights of Bryant and Chester when they failed to train their employees on accident scene picture sharing protocol. During closing statements earlier Wednesday, the 11th day of the trial, county defense attorneys argued there wasn't enough evidence to prove first responders shared the crash site photos with the public. But that wasn't the only thing that happened that day. To mark the day this year, a new mural of Kobe Bryant was unveiled on Hope Street, about two blocks from the federal courthouse where his widow was awarded the verdict. Hordes of fans admired the new painting, including Rob Brown, who was visiting Los Angeles with his family from Richmond, Virginia. Brown also commented on Vanessa Bryant's trial and called the verdict more than fair. There was no need to even attempt to show those photos, said Brown. Meanwhile, and other NBA-related news. First up, Lakers finalized a deal for acquiring Patrick Beverly. The Los Angeles Lakers have finalized a trade to acquire Utah Jazz guard Patrick Beverly. The deal, completed Thursday morning, sends Lakers guard Talon Horton Tucker and forward Stanley Johnson to the Jazz, sources said. Beverly referenced the deal in a tweet Thursday morning, writing that he woke up a Laker. Beverly, 34, returns to Los Angeles after spending 27 to 2021 with the Clippers, bringing with him a well-established ferocity and defensive presence that new coach Darvin Ham is determined to implement into the defense that ranked 21st in the league last season. Beverly played a significant role in Minnesota's return to the playoffs last season before landing in Utah as part of the Rudy Gobert trade. Beverly was eager to join the Lakers in a trade, sources said, and thrilled to learn of the impending deal. Over the past five seasons, Beverly has held opponents to 41.9% shooting as the closest defender, second best among players defending 2,000 shots according to ESPN Stats and Information. Beverly's arrival on an expiring $13 million contract essentially leaves only LeBron James $46.7 million and Anthony Davis $40.6 million on the Lakers' books in 2023-24, delivering them significant salary cap space to remake the roster around those two two all-NBA stars. Next up, Chet Holmgren will be missing the 2022-23 season because of a foot injury. Oklahoma City Thunders announced on Thursday that Chet Holmgren, the number two pick in the NBA draft, had suffered a Liss Frank injury to his right foot early in the crossover Pro-Am event. While he was defending LeBron James on a fast break and will miss the 2022-23 season because of that, Presti told reporters later Thursday during an availability session that Holmgren will have foot surgery after the Thunder consulted with three of the nation's top foot specialists. He confirmed that Holmgren had suffered a ruptured tendon in his foot and not a fracture, noting that the Thunder were optimistic about his long-term recovery but that they would be extremely conservative. Holmgren's size was a frequent topic of debate throughout his lone season at Gonzaga and during the weeks leading into the draft, as critics questioned whether his 7'1", 195-pound frame would withstand the physical rigors of NBA basketball. However, Presti emphasized that the contact injury wasn't related in any way to Holmgren's size. And lastly, what does the future hold for Kevin Durant and the Nets? Kevin Durant and the Brooklyn Nets are 
running it back. In a statement released Tuesday, Nets general manager Sean Marks said the past MVP and two-time NBA champion will remain with the franchise after originally requesting a trade on June 30th. Durant is still under contract for four more years, and no other team has come close to offering to give Brooklyn what it wants for a trade, which looks like a pretty big hit for KD's image. The two choices Durant had were either to play or try to hold out. That would have been the only logical option for both sides. For these past few years, during which KD, one of the game's greatest players, has been at the top of his game, it would be nice to see him compete for championships instead of being mired in dysfunction. This outcome feels like it's only setting up more drama. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think the verdict was justified? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one!